Hi there. Now here's something that I don't do very often, or I doubt if anybody else does unless they're professional, which is to hang or change curtains or hang curtains or whatever you want to call it. Um, so I thought I'd just give a quick walkthrough of how to do it. Um, having done four sets around the house and coming now to the fifth one. Um, the first thing is uh, what size curtains do you need? So you don't measure the actual width of the curtain, so the, uh, the width of the window, I beg your pardon. So the window frame there. What's important is the width of the curtain rail at the top. So if you can see that up there. And what you have to measure for the when ordering the curtain is from end to end of the curtain rail. So you just sort of take the tape measure, a tape measure. Measure it across and look what measurement you get when you've finished doing that. And I've got two, whatever that is, 2000 on my tape measure. So this is a metric country, so it's 2000 metrics, which is probably two meters. Now that will be the width of the curtain. The next thing is the height, or as we say in the trade the drop. So if I want to keep the same drop as currently there, I measure from the top of the curtain down to the bottom and that comes to 1400 things. So I've got 2000 that way, 1400 that way and the way the curtains come is in packets of two, so that's curtain one, curtain two and the measurement they'll give you on the packets will be um, the what we call the track width. So if I hold that towards the camera, you may not or may not be able to read it. But they've got a little picture of the curtains and also the coverage size. So on this one it says to fit a track between 150 and 230. Well, I measured 2,000, and I think with the metric stuff you have to knock the naught off the end. So in centimetres speak, that's 200. So it's between 150 and 230, 200, which is fine. So the width I'm looking for is in that range. And then the drop, which is on the side there, and here it says 160. And I got 140. Um, so the ones I'm putting up are slightly longer and I'm only doing that because that's the closest find I could, uh, closest size I could find. So it actually shows on the back of the packet um, what size is available in this particular range. So um, what I'm looking for therefore is something about 2000 or 200 by uh, 140 to 160. Uh, you notice on the top the gathering here, and I think that's called in the language uh, pencil pleat. So I usually, I usually have a picture on the front anyway to illustrate what they are. So there's one that's got holes in, which go on a bar, or there's these ones called pencil pleat. So I'm looking for pencil pleat. Also, these ones are thermal lined, which means they've got a lining on the inside. I don't know if you can see that. So that's uh, the effort to try and keep the warmth in and the cold out. Yeah, that's right. Uh, because uh, double glazing isn't a feature of most windows in this country, which is New Zealand. Um, so the cold air comes into the windows, so you buy thermal lined curtains. So, okay, so we know now what we're looking for. We go to the shop and you buy them. The next thing to do is to work out what to do next. Moving on. Right, I'm up to stage, we'll call it stage three. Stage one was sizing the curtains, stage two was perching the curtains, and stage three is prepping them for hanging. And um, they usually come in a packet, and on the packet it usually says leave them out to hang for 12 hours or something like that. Um, in a well ventilated room because they are made of 
synthetic fabrics which may give off um, not too pleasant fumes and such like. And once that's done, then it's a matter of um, getting the creases out from the packing. And to achieve that, um, I've got an ironing, ironing board. That's a flat surface with some padding on it. Um, you may find one of these around the house. Uh, an iron. Now this has actually got a steam iron, which has got a vent coming out the front. Um, but I'm not brave enough to put a hot iron straight onto the cloth. So I'm using uh, a piece of cloth, like it's an old tea towel or something. And what I'll do, I'll wet that and then use that. And I'll iron on top of that cloth to dampen and then smooth out the curtain and its wrinkles. Um, so I'll just step through that process. You may be saying, well, what temperature do you have the iron on? Well, that I'm not sure of because on the uh, curtains themselves it says composition is polyester with the backing of acrylic vis viscose. Blah, blah, blah. Care instructions open in a well-vented area, well, ventilated area. Recommend the product is aired for 12 24 hours before being ironed and hung. Okay, so I'll then look on the little turning knob inside here for belt, um, whatever that, what's it say it was? Polyester. And I can't actually see it on there. So I've got nylon, silk, wool, cotton, or linen. So I've set it to cotton because the this is cotton. Now, one word of caution: uh, this wouldn't pass a health and safety check because this is really, really wobbly. This is incredibly hot. So you've got kids around or animals, pets, get them out of the way. Your curtain will inevitably fall on the ground. Um, so if the ground is a bit not too clean, I suggest perhaps putting a sheet down so you don't dirty the new curtain. Um, so I'll go and wet the cloth and we'll get started. Back in a minute. Now that cloth is quite wet, I'll just run under, under the tap. So you just place it on to the curtain like that. And then I don't even see its crease where the crease marks are and the fold lines are. And it's just trying to not completely eliminate them necessarily, but at least lose them. So if this is up to temperature, it should make a lot of hissing noise, a lot of steam come off. Ooh, there we go. So it's just a matter of keeping the iron moving and just changing the bits where the folds are. Uh, don't put the iron down like that, obviously because that's hot. Like that, and and just move your wet towel or whatever you're using cloth along to do the next bit. Right, there we go. So I'm going to have to do the far end, uh, probably turn the, turn the curtain round to do the other end, but then I'll uh, to carry on down, I'll just pull it over. Now, word of caution, as I said, this is quite unstable, so don't pull, it's best to lift to your next crease and then just flatten it out and do it, I say, fairly gently because you don't want everything falling down on the floor. Um, whilst you're doing this, it's quite repetitive and boring. You can watch TV or listen to music or have an audio play on. Um, if you really want to get in character, you can watch something like Downton Abbey. Pretend you're uh, one of the down, downstairs staff. Because I imagine this function hasn't changed much since about the 1910s. So much for progress. 
So you get the idea, and I'll come back to you when I start putting the hooks in. Right, that's the curtain ironed. I've now reversed it, and this is the back of the curtain. Now, um, the next thing you have to do is to gather up the top, so you get that sort of pleated effect that you saw. And this is achieved by pulling on the drawstrings that are either end of the top of the curtain. So first off, decide which bit is the middle. It's going to be the middle of the um, which bit of the curtain is going to the middle, because um, you want to pull through the cord from the end that's going to be at the end of the curtain, not the middle of the curtains. So oh, and these curtains, they're already tied together. Sometimes they're loose and have to be tied. So I'll just pull that through a little bit, not too much. And then I'll pull this end through to try and get that pleated effect. And the art to this is to get the ripples to go all the way down through the top of the curtain evenly. Now I can't say I'm an expert at this. In fact I will say I'm not an expert at this. But you get the general idea. And the next question that comes to mind is, well okay, I pulled the thread through the top, but how far do I go? Well, you want the curtain to be the same width as half of the window. So if you think about it, the curtain's going to meet in the middle. I'll set the window I'm measuring is 2,000 or 200 or whatever the thing is, so this will need to be, say, 1,100. So I've done that bit of gathering, and then I'll measure it. And I've gathered it into 1,100. So that's about spot on for hanging. So having done that, what you then do is then just tie it off. So I'll just loop it around the finger and, ooh, with a bit of luck, pull it through and try and keep the knot at that end like that. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be tight. Remember, if you're going to take these down and wash them or anything, ha ha, um, you will need to un undo that and spread it out flat again. Okay, so that's got that. So it's then just a matter of getting the pleats sort of as even as possible across the top, like so, which isn't too bad. Now, don't go by the label on the end because the label's on the same end for both sets of curtains. So uh, this is the end of the window frame, that's the middle. The next bit of curtain, you'll see the label here. So don't tie off the same end as the label, because uh, that's not a good indicator. Okay, now the next thing to do is the hooks. Now to save me having to work out how many hooks I need, I'm just going to take the hooks off the old curtain. So I'm getting them down. If I can find how to do it, I'll do it. So it's just a matter of with each hook. You can see that. Um, you can see that hook up there. If I zoom in a bit. The hook is that shape, and it just you're just pushing against that one, that the sharp bit at the bottom to push it out from the holder.
So you just basically go along and do that. They are quite sharp, so you've got a sensitive thumb or a finger which you're pushing with. You can put a plaster on to give your thumb some sort of protection. So there we go. So it's not too difficult. And just continue until you've got them all down. And I, oh, come on, that's it. Alright. And just while I'm up here, I'll just show you. There's the hook close up, so you're just pushing against that bit there to free it from the curtain rail. And to take it off the old curtain, it's just a matter of pressing on the top and then sliding it and pulling like that. So you just go along and remove all the hooks. It's not too difficult. And To the end. You'll notice on this that the hook spacing quite varied, so that will affect how the curtains look when they're hung. And the suggestion on the back of the curtain packet is one every four loops but that certainly wasn't. I'll just check so I've taken them all off. Yep, they all seem to be gone. So what I do now, I've got that many hooks to go along that length of tape. So there's going to be at least one at the one end. So it's just put in the reverse. You've got three options, sorry two options. You can either put them at the bottom the middle or the top, depending on how how long the drop is that you want. Um, so I'm not particularly really worried about the drop, so I'll just put them in the middle. So it's a tuck under, pull through and round, as easy as that. Put one on the other end, push under and swing round. And then I'll just dot the hooks so they don't seem to be too many along the curtain like that, roughly evenly spaced, and then just put them through the holes to make sure as you go along that you're consistent and keep to the middle if that's what you're using, not the top or the bottom. So you're just pushing down, pulling through, turning. Pushing down, pulling through and turning, pushing down, pulling through and turning, pushing down, pulling through and turning, pushing down, oops, missed, pushing down, pulling through, turning, pushing down, pulling through and turning. That's probably not as good as it should be, but never mind. See how it looks when it when it's hung up. Pushing down, pulling through and turning, pushing down, pulling through and turning, pushing down, pulling through and turning. So that's all the hooks done. The next thing is to say reverse the process on the curtain rail and put the hooks up. Now it's quite hard to show this because the light's coming through the window and can't see very well from the camera so what I have got, I've got a hook at the end of the line here and that's, that's not going to slide that just stabilises uh, to stop the curtain swing along 
and this will go up then help hire the speaker wires and such like as you have in a bedroom. So it just goes on, so you just like that, just clip it over and clip and clip. Now the key thing here is not to miss one of the loops. So just keep going and make sure you don't miss a loop. Uh, if you miss a loop then the curtains just don't seem to hang properly. So there we go. So far so good. And I'm too short, but I think that's because they weren't in the first place, so it's And then that should just hang like that. Job done. Well, there's a big, big gap you there, isn't it? So I'll just, I've got two spear hooks here. I may just need to go get another couple of, uh, well, two spare loops. I may need to go get a couple of hooks just to make that look a bit more even. Okay. Well, if you're going to have a go at it, hope it works out okay. Cheers.